So, you've been thinking about smart home automation, but you feel it's super complicated and you're not sure if it's for you. Well, today we're going to do an intro to smart home automation and we're going to keep it simple. I'm going to walk you through what you need to consider step by step, how to get started, decisions that you might need to make, and we're going to look at how you can grow your system over time. This video is going to have chapters. So if you want to jump ahead or you want to come back later when you're ready for the next step, you should be able to jump around pretty easily. Now, this is the perfect time for you to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm always sharing tech info, smart home automation, I talk about home assistant all the time, review tech gear and gadgets, and if you have tips, you have tricks or ideas you want to share, toss them in the comments below. I think anyone new to home automation is quickly going to see that this is a very welcoming community. Okay, let's get down to business. First off, what is smart home automation? Well, nothing magic, I'll tell you that. Basically, all we're doing is we're going to add some automation to everyday tasks. Typically, this takes some sort of action and it results in a reaction. For example, every day at 7 p.m., turn on my outside lights. This uses a time-based event and sends a command to a smart home light bulb or a switch and it just turns it on at 7. That's pretty much it and it's all you need to get started. Most systems simply grow over time from something that started simple like that. You still here? Perfect. Let's talk about your new smart home. I want you to take a look around. Make a note of any devices that you might already have. Gaming consoles, appliances, garage door openers, audio devices. Think of anything that plugs in. The simple stuff. Make note if any of those items are smart devices. If you bought that appliance within the last few years, it might already have smart technology built in and you didn't even realize. Take a look and see if any of them have a label indicating something smart about them. Does your house have an alarm system? Make a note if you do of the brand and the model if you know what it is. Now, add any other smart devices you know of or you were thinking of buying. These might even be the reason you're interested in a smart home in the first place. Light bulbs, light strips, locks, plug-in modules, motion sensors. How about a smart watch? Are you an Apple or an Android home? You might even already have a smart assistant from Google, Amazon, or Apple. Thinking of anything? Think of anything. And don't worry if you've got nothing, it's all good. This list is just gonna help us make some decisions. If you wanna see some examples, check out this video up here. I take a look at a bunch of Zigbee devices and they're inexpensive and they work with most systems. Now let's talk smart home languages. Every smart home device or gadget needs to communicate. And there's a number of different languages they can speak. The fancy name for this is protocol. You've heard some of them before for sure. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Matter, Zigbee, Z-Wave, or they could simply have brand names on them like HomeKit compatible. Take a look at your list of devices and make a note if you know the name of the protocol that any of them speak. Very often it's just written on the box or the device itself. Now if you can't find the protocol, just make a note of the brand and we'll figure that one out in the next step. Okay, all your homework is done. And again, if you don't really have anything on your list, don't worry. The following will help you decide how to make that first purchase and start building your system. Let's talk about the good stuff. And we'll start with simple ways to control those devices. Take a look at your list and start with your big brands. Companies like Samsung and LG, they often have an app that you can download to control all of their devices. Sometimes you're going to need at least one device like a TV that acts like the brain of the system. And sometimes they sell a small device or add-on hub that does this for you. They typically make these apps super easy to use. You can add devices by scanning a QR code or just pick them from a list. After that, they walk you through a few setup questions and you're done. These brand apps will often even support other brands. Now, they don't make it quite as easy to set them up, but they do work. They'd rather you stick with their app and use their ecosystem rather than go and choose someone else's app. Sometimes you're gonna notice that functionality is reduced when you add a non-brand device, or it's just not as simple to add. And it does make sense since, well, they don't wanna know all the details about other brands. So they might just ask you what standard protocol your device uses. And remember we talked about Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee, etc. Okay, I know you're sitting there now and you're thinking, I don't have anything, what should I get? What should I buy? Well, my suggestion, if you're gonna buy your first device, pick a protocol and stick with it. I would suggest Zigbee. It's probably one of the most common languages that smart home devices speak, and it'll work with most hubs and ecosystems. These devices, they're also pretty inexpensive. I would start off with a light bulb, a motion sensor, and an Amazon Alexa device. You can probably get all of this for under hundred bucks and it'll let you start to set up a system. The best part is all of this can be used in any system you end up with or you expand to in the future. I'm going to throw some links down below. Take a look and see if you're interested. So 
Let's say you have an LG TV and a Samsung washer and dryer. Well, how should you choose which one is right? Well, there really is no right answer. Try both. In many cases, you can actually add your devices to many different apps and just see which one you like best. Or just start with the brand you have the most devices for. The trick at this point is to find a single app that supports most of your devices and you're comfortable using it. After all, all of these apps will have some way to schedule actions. Typically, they call these rules or automations. Could even be something clever like recipes. Let's take a minute and talk about automations. Smart home automations are the heart of any system. They allow you to build logic around what you want to do. As I mentioned before, it could be as simple as something that happens at a specific time, such as turning on those lights at sunset. You can also create automations that are triggered by another device. For example, you could have a motion detector in your front hall. Whenever you walk past it, it's just going to turn the lights on in your hallway. Once the motion has stopped or gone away, let's say for five minutes, it's going to turn the lights off again. Your first automation should be something simple like this. Follow the simple rule of if this, then that. If motion, then light. Once you start to use automations like this one, you'll realize you want to make little adjustments. The example I just gave you, you may find you don't want your lights turning on in the middle of the day, but only at night. So the real power of automations comes when you start to add conditions to those automations. In this case, everything would stay the same, but when the motion was triggered, it would first check to make sure it was between sunset and sunrise. If it is, meaning it's dark outside, well then turn on the lights. If not, then do nothing. This could go a step further as there's many devices that can measure the light levels in a room. Often the sensor is built into motion detectors. So instead of using the time of day, you could use the light level sensor in your motion detector as your condition. And based on its level, have the automation decide to either turn the light on or not. With that, you should have chosen an app added some devices, and set up some basic automations. You can stop here. Believe it or not, you now have a smart home. But you know what? Let's talk about the next level. At this point, you may find you're completely happy with your smart home app, and you may never want to move on to anything else. But if you're like me, you may realize some limitations fairly quickly. It could be that an app you're using just doesn't support a specific device you want to add. Or you may find that the automations are just too basic, not enough conditions or flexibility. Another problem could be lack of control. You might want to add some sort of dashboard or other method of controlling your device outside of those automations, or maybe even a control to turn on and off the automations themselves easily when you don't want the lights to automatically turn on and off. Well, it might be time to look at a purpose-built application, an app, or even a hub. The ones I'm talking about are usually not specific to a brand, so they try to support all of the major protocols equally. Sometimes they're sold by a company, but very often they're open source solutions supported by a large community of smart home enthusiasts. They just want to automate their home, so they share ideas, tutorials like this video, and the more people that have interest, the more the solutions grow. You may find in time you even participate, offer to help, or contribute in some way. The first I'll talk about are solutions from companies. Like I mentioned before, Samsung has a hub that they call SmartThings. Now you can purchase this as an add-on to add additional products within the Samsung app. And sometimes it's built into TVs or other appliances. Google and Amazon both offer smart home devices that are very similar to this. They usually offer voice control and some sort of automations. Apple, it has HomeKit. This is their version of smart home automation system. It's built into Apple TV and some Apple HomePod speakers. And of course, this can be a great option if you have an Apple family, but not so much if you use Android phones. Now, the final option, in my opinion, it's the best, is something like Home Assistant or OpenHub. These are completely free open source solutions. In the past, you needed to have some sort of computer expertise in order to set them up, but today you can buy ready to go devices if that's the route you'd like to go. For example, you can order Home Assistant Green. It's a simple little device, costs about a hundred bucks, and all you do is plug it in, turn it on, it'll boot up, and most likely start detecting devices you already have. Once that's done, you can easily start adding others. Now, if you're a little bit more daring, check out uh, the video. I'll link it again up here, and I walk you through setting up Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi or some old, other old computer you may have lying around the house. Now. Why are these the best? Like I said before, no corporate entity is guiding what they do. It's simply home automation enthusiasts creating the perfect product to improve home automation. It's just a community. So that's it, 101, the basics. If you take only one thing away from this, it's that you can start simple, really simple. Home automation is really just a bunch of little tiny building blocks. You can slowly add pieces one by one until you're happy with what it's doing. Sometimes I get to a point where I don't change a thing for months. 
and then I start working on it again or even start from scratch. I hope you found this interesting. I have many other videos that dive into some of these topics much deeper. If you're interested, take a look. Leave me a comment if there's something specific you'd like to know or if you're having any trouble. Like I said, I source ideas for my content from the comments. I like to try and help people out. That's it. I hope you like this one and I hope to see you in the next one.